What's up, ceramic students? Welcome back to the studio. Uh, today we're actually going to get our hands dirty for the first time and um, work on a project that's really about kind of learning directly from the clay and figuring out what it is that you know we can get our hands to do. It's a very basic project. Um, we're going to engage in a little bit of hand building, a sort of opening up a form in clay, a void, um, called a, sometimes called a pinch pot. We're going to use sort of a pinching action to sort of gradually sort of forge or pinch out or squeeze out the clay. Um, and if we're doing it right, uh, it won't crack, it won't deform, uh, and it'll allow us to get very thin walled uh, pieces of clay and uh, using no tools other than really our hands and just a bit of water. Uh, so a couple things you want to do to get ready for today is um, grab a towel. Uh, it'll be really nice to have that, especially if you're going to be working anywhere near a computer where you might have to kind of pause or something like that. Uh, at least one of your hands is going to be pretty uh, pretty dirty today. I mentioned uh, in a previous video that if you're not near uh, a sink that has a nice big trap in it, you might want to have a bucket of water close by for doing um, for just kind of like rinsing off your hands. Uh, before you go to the sink. One of the things you'll use uh, today, really the only tool other than your hands for working, is a little bit of water. So a small dish of water close by. Um, could just be uh, something that you pulled out of the recycling bin or whatever. Uh, so towel, some water, and then let's um, separate out our, uh, our kits here so that we can make use of our wear boards. And eventually uh, we'll make use of the bin as well. So there's a lot of stuff in here um, that you can leave in your home studios uh, and, uh, and we don't have to go traveling back and forth to school uh, with it. Uh, so let's get out just the stuff we need today and we'll set everything else aside in a place that, you know, it'll be undisturbed and we don't have to worry about anybody walking away with it. Uh, you'll need uh, your larger block of ceramic clay. Your ceramic clay is the one that's sort of like a, kind of a buff color. Uh, it's literally mud. If we leave it uh, out of this plastic bag, it'll dry out. Um, some of you guys already have your oil clay in your kits. Do not use the oil clay for this project. It'll take you forever. And then um, even though we have a whole suite of tools in your art kit, uh, let's just set these aside. Uh, one of the things I really like to do is just have a... Have a, um, a can or a jar close by. Uh, that way, I can sort of easily sort out which tools are what in my kit. All right, that's better. I can kind of see what I got going on now. Uh, we're going to use the bin today uh, as a way of actually kind of helping manage our dry times, and um, we'll be using our wear board uh, to sort of protect the surface uh, where you're working. Now I'm working in kind of an industrial space here, so I don't have to really worry about um, water or clay dust getting on anything. If you do have a space where you just cannot find a workbench and you're kind of stuck working in an environment where um, it really matters, like you can't get it dirty, uh, you could use uh, the sort of plastic sheeting that I've given you to lay it down on the table. That'll prevent you know, drips of water and you know clay dust from getting on your stuff. If you feel like you need a larger sheet of plastic, um, you're welcome to ask me for it. I've got a, a big roll of it, uh, but this is just like four mil plastic sheeting. I buy it from the hardware store on big rolls. It's um, kind of like an industrial product, uh, but it'll be really great for protecting a surface. And then you just roll it back up and put it back in your art kit when you're done. The only other tool that um, you may want to use today uh, is your wire tool. Yours may be packaged up and carefully wound. Um, as you're untangling your wire tool, um, make sure that you don't kink the wire. You notice that in my wire here, I actually have a bit of a kink that never goes away. Like if you pull it before it's completely unknotted, um, not that that's a huge deal, um, but this uh, this steel wire here, what's called sometimes called steel rope, um, it doesn't recover from those kinks very well. That's usually where it will fail down the road. What you need is to get yourself um, a piece of clay off your block. And um, these blocks, uh, you could just kind of rip it off the top here, but uh, this is where the wire tool really shines. Uh, we'll shave off maybe, I don't know, half inch off the top or so. Uh, what you're looking for is something uh, maybe a little bit larger than the size of a golf ball. Once you've got uh, your, your sort of rough block of clay cut off, I like to usually clean off my wire tool, stick whatever little bits are back on the block, and then wrap up that clay. Uh, something to note, 
something to note about this clay, especially if you're uh, going to be traveling back and forth to school with it, is that uh, it should never be left in your car, particularly if it's really cold outside. If this block of clay freezes, um, it uh, it lacks. It, it'll have to just be recycled. It's, there's no real great way to kind of recover it after it's been frozen. Uh, so let me know if that happens to you. I'll just trade you your blocks, but uh, avoid that dilemma of just not never leaving it in your car. Uh, once you have um, your small block of clay, I'm going to take my ring off. I never like getting clay on the inside of my ring. Or if you happen to wear jewelry on your hands, bracelets, watches, uh, let's take all that off. Uh, I'm not going to wear any extra smock today. Um, but if you are concerned about getting dirty, go ahead and throw that shirt on, wear that apron. Uh, we're going to start by hand wedging our clay. Uh, think of this as a little bit like... Um, packing a snowball and what's going to end up happening is visually you're going to notice that some of the big deep cracks just sort of get compressed and they disappear. If you're seeing really deep cracks and crevices in your clay uh, you're not quite doing it right. Uh, it also sort of wakes up the clay. You notice that when you cut it off the block it was kind of stiff. Uh, after working it in your hands a little bit with this hand wedging technique, uh, the clay softens up quite a bit. It has nothing to do with how warm or how cold it is because this clay, um, it doesn't soften up uh, with like temperature. Uh, this clay softens up, one, by adding water, but two, uh, because of the way the clay sits and the sort of platelet-like molecules of the clay, it can get real dense and real hard pretty fast. If, uh, uh, not pretty fast. Um, it gets real dense and hard if it sits for a long time. And then all you have to do is sort of work it to wake it up. So I usually give that, I don't know, something in the vicinity, like maybe 50 to 100 hand wedges whenever I'm working on clay. Uh, now one of the sort of hidden secrets behind working in clay is you can actually make the clay stronger or what we might call more plastic by wedging it, which is going to be really important to think about later on when we do our, um, our wheel throwing. Uh, but at this point, um, now we're going to sort of use our thumb uh, and our forefinger, sort of like a, a pinching technique here. We're going to drive our thumb down into the top of the clay and begin compressing it. And uh, with these compressions, we're gonna take what's just sort of like a big lump of clay in our hands and begin to open it up. Now this is where uh, you'll actually kind of have, uh, have to kind of add a bit of water occasionally. If you use a bit of water, uh, it sort of softens uh, the sort of lubricates the inside of the clay a little bit, allows you to kind of gently stretch the clay or form the clay. Uh, if you notice big cracks forming on the outside of your pinched form here, you know you're moving too fast. So first thing I'm doing is just sort of driving my thumb down into the clay ball until I get all the way down into the clay so that maybe there's about a, a quarter of an inch or so of clay at the very bottom. That's a bit of a feel thing. And I'm going to make very, very small pinches or deformations. If any of you guys have any experience working with metal, this is very much like the way you would work in a forge, hitting hot metal with a hammer. Small little adjustments over time actually makes the metal stronger. Uh, small little compressions of the clay like this actually make the clay stronger. When I get down to the bottom of the clay, I'm going to transition from just kind of pushing my thumb deeper and deeper and deeper down into the small pot and I'm going to start pinching the bottom wall of the clay. We're going to grow this pot from the bottom to the top. We'll start pinching off, pinching the bottom of the wall here, slowly turning it each time. Pinch, 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 pinch. And it'll kind of gradually open up as it comes toward the top. Now we've kind of already committed ourselves to this project. We're probably into it now for about 15 or 20 minutes at least and then we'll have to set it aside and most of you guys will probably set it aside overnight and uh, the rest of you maybe you have a little free time maybe you're going to try to go for this all in one run um, you just got to give it a break in between and during that break time it will dry out just a little bit and as water-based clays like these ceramics clays dry out they stiffen up and so when you come back to a slightly stiffer piece of clay, you will be able to um, you'll be able to form it and thin out the walls even more. Ideally here, 
what we're going for is an open void piece, a pot-like piece. And the thinner the walls, the better. That's the main goal here. As you're pinching your clay pot open, I want you to sort of pay really close attention to how much, um, how much the clay is teaching you, how much the clay is sort of telling you what it's capable of and what it can do and what it can't do. Uh, how hard can I pinch before the clay begins to rip? Uh, if the clay rips, can I just kind of polish it out? Is it sort of a superficial rip um, or is it a deep crack? And if it's a deep crack, uh, there are some solutions we can have for that, but the deep cracks are usually a sign that you're just um, you're moving too fast. Make smaller pinches, slower pinches, and there's a really good chance that um, you'll end up probably having to take a break, not because the clay needs a break, but because you need a break. Uh, this is the same sort of muscle group, pinch, 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 over and over and over again, and eventually you'll notice that your forearms are probably getting pretty tired. Um, so you can do a couple of other things. You can sort of uh, use the surface of the table to sort of help flatten it out instead of making small pinches. You can sort of uh, push the clay down onto the surface of the canvas board and not only does it sort of flatten the outside of your piece but kind of gives your forearms a bit of a break. And if the clay starts to feel really really weak and just avoid that area. So I've, I've got some, you know, fairly good thinning happening down here at the bottom, and then I've got real thick walls still at the top. Now one of the reasons uh, we work with clay in the art department here, or we include clay in your in your art studio experience, in your school experience, um, is that it's a really interesting, very curious material. Uh, it's a modeling material or a molding material that has very little form that you don't already give it. I mean. The form that it comes in when I give it to you guys is a form that I just sort of cut off of a block after mixing it uh, in a large clay mixer, but um, clay immediately starts to mold and sort of deform in your hands as soon as you pick it up. Um, compare that to, say, for example, uh, like a woodworker or a woodcarver uh, or somebody who, you know, uh, is forming other materials that have a lot of pre-existing form to them. Oftentimes, you know, you'll even see furniture that seems to sort of reference the um, the dimensional lumber that it was made out of, very straight edges, cut corners, things. Uh, clay is such an interesting material in that it really doesn't have a lot of that pre-existing form. It, it can become so many different things. And uh, in some ways that can be very scary, right? Like it means that if your hands are untrained or unskilled, um, that clay can really take on some strange forms in a hurry and uh, can be kind of embarrassing, right? So this first piece, it may not even be all that exciting. It may not be uh, something you really want to keep. Uh, but what you are learning is just sort of some of the basic kind of feelings of how that clay is going to pinch open. I'm getting to a point with my pinch pot here where if I take it too much further, uh, right here, right away, I mean, I've only been working on it for maybe five or ten minutes, and um, it, uh, it will start to fall apart on me or collapse. The clay walls are getting too thin, and so um, I need to give it a rest. I need to give it a break. Uh, if I was going to um, try to just finish this piece all in one fell swoop, uh, what I would do is I would dry it upside down for maybe 10, 15 minutes and then come back to it and check it. Uh, and when you do that, you'll notice that it sort of stiffens up a bit. Uh, I might give it a few more minutes sort of drying right side up so that it dries inside and outside. If you're um, going to wait overnight, you're going to try to come back to this piece tomorrow to do all of your finishing work, uh, then here's what you do. Make sure that it has something like a flat edge uh, that is going to be fairly stable for you to move that around. And use the plastic bin that you've got to sort of set it down over the top. Uh, overnight, that's not going to dry out too, too, too much, too badly. It will probably dry out um, to what we call leather hard by tomorrow, and that'll give us another opportunity to work back into it. If you are concerned that the uh, that your piece is going to dry out too much or it's already starting to dry out uh, or if you left it to sit for 15 or 20 minutes and it's already stiffening up too much then what I recommend you doing is lay that piece of plastic the smaller of the two pieces of plastic that you have down on the canvas board first uh, that'll prevent any moisture from being pulled out of your piece and uh, and your board will sort of fit tightly uh, underneath the uh, plastic bin that creates a bit of an airtight seal. Uh, it'll dry out a little bit because there's a pocket of air around your piece, but it'll probably be just about perfect for work tomorrow. 
this whole setup then travels to school tomorrow or the next day or travels home with you for work at home the next day. Uh, it's a bit of an experiment to see if you guys can manage this, but um, uh, I'll come back later on in the tutorial and sort of finish up this piece. Uh, but if this, you're at this moment now where um, your clay is probably too, uh, too wet to do much more work with. So uh, I'm going to give this probably 15 or 20 minutes and I'll be back to finish it up. So I'm back to finish up my pinch pot and I've got it either stored overnight in my plastic bin and the canvas board and gypsum board that's underneath here has pulled out a significant amount of moisture from it, right? And um, I can feel the piece. It's, uh, it's colder now. Uh, it's stiffer in my hands. I feel like it's not going to tip over on me. Or, you know, maybe instead of leaving it in the bin, you just left it uncovered. Um, I left mine uncovered for about 20 minutes or so, and that was plenty of um, that was plenty of time for me to stiffen it up because I have a small heater here in my studio, and uh, the hot air blowing it uh, dried it up pretty quickly. One of the ways that you could actually sort of speed things up for yourself would be if you have a blow dryer, uh, you could actually blow dry it. Uh, be careful adding too much heat too quickly. Um, you can actually crack the clay uh, if it dries too fast too quickly, it's sort of a heat shock problem, or because it's shrinking really fast as it's drying, um, you'll crack the clay. It's much better if you dry the clay more slowly. Uh, however you got it to this point, um, we'll call it uh, probably something like leather hard, right? Leather hard clay, it, uh, it barely leaves a fingerprint on it now when you touch it. Uh, now it also, if it's you know taken some time uh, to, to get you here, uh, it probably has sort of entered into sort of that, sort of stiffened itself up, but as soon as you start to work with it now today, uh, it will um, it will start to get more malleable again. Clay is sort of goofy like that. So uh, we've got probably one more class period worth of work in this piece. If uh, if the piece got too dry on you, uh, is it's possible that you might be able to bring it back uh, using either a little bit of water and a sponge, um, or you could also. Um, use a spray bottle and give it a spray or two and then let it sit and allow it to kind of absorb some of that moisture. Um, but if you notice the clay has sort of taken on a bit of a chalky color and um, you can kind of gouge it with your finger and it makes dust, um, that's too far gone. That, that uh, piece of clay has now entered the sort of final drying stage called um, bone dry or uh, greenware clay and you should no longer work with it at that point. Uh, you can pinch and pinch and pinch all day long on a piece of greenware clay and it will never compress. In fact, there's a really good chance you'll just break it. Um, so if that's the case, just kind of call it quits and start, for, start from uh, scratch with a wet piece of clay. Now today, uh, I'll kind of reiterate the main goal of this project is not necessarily to make something beautiful or to make something practical or make something useful. Uh, it's really just sort of an experiment in trying to get this clay uh, to be, um, you know, so to get some control over it, but to have real thin walls. Okay, that's what I'm going to be grading on. Uh, I'm going to check to make sure that your walls are at least um, sort of pencil thickness or thinner ideally. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't pinch these down to about an eighth of an inch thickness or so. Uh, if you can make that happen on your first pinch pot, I think you're uh, probably in great position in this class. I'm going to use a variety of different techniques. Some of them are that same pinching. Some of them uh, will be me sort of pushing the clay down onto the surface of the canvas board. And I'm always going to kind of be working from the bottom of the pot toward the top. If you grabbed a lot of clay, there's a good chance uh, that, your, um, uh, that your hands and your fingers may not actually be long enough to reach down to the bottom of your pot when it's quite that size. And so uh, just use, uh, use what you've got, use your fingers, uh, sort of get the clay to do what it can. And once you are content with the thickness of the walls, we'll set this aside and call it done. If you start to notice that your piece is cracking at the rim or it's getting a lot of cracks in the outside, there's a couple things we can do. Uh, you can add a little bit of water and just sort of polish away those, uh, those cracks if they're fairly superficial. If they're really deep and you would like to repair them, grab this tool 
this tool uh, is a scoring tool and I don't have any real deep cracks here but I'll just demonstrate on this small one where uh, I'm just going to scratch it back and forth in a couple of different directions and uh, make the scratches really deep. Essentially we're going to wound the clay uh, in a big area and blend all of those uh, sort of the sides of the two cracks together and then flip your uh, flip your scoring tool over to the smoothing tool and then blend over the outside. You'll be surprised at how relatively easy it is to repair the surface of clay uh, as long as the cracks aren't too dry. If the clay is still have, uh, if the clay still has its sort of wet workability, uh, there's nothing that you can't repair, repair on it. Just be careful, the more water you add, the softer it gets and it's possible that you'll bring this piece right back to where it was yesterday uh, when we began for the first time. One of the last things I'll do to this piece then before I uh, sort of call it quits on my first pinch pot is that I'll take a sponge and run it along the outside, take out any finger marks or any tool marks that might still be there, and then if this is a piece that you're really excited about, uh, it's a bowl, uh, it's uh, something that could potentially have a function in your uh, in your studio or maybe even in your kitchen, uh, but it may be a bit of a bobble pot, so you might want to give it a flat bottom so that it stays put, kind of give it a couple tap tap taps on the tabletop. Uh, if, uh, if this is just a piece uh, that you're doing for credit, just to sort of prove to Mr. Beck that you can, in fact, make a pinch pot, well, make sure that before it gets um, sort of recycled or broken, that you photograph it. Now, in general, I'm going to say that I want to see uh, process images in your portfolio, and I also want to see finished images in the portfolio. Uh, and so uh, what I'm working on right now, right so far, if I wanted to kind of stop here and take my smartphone out and just kind of give a quick process shot, that does two things. That proves to me uh, that the work is happening in your studio, uh, but it also proves to me that the work was completed, at least partially completed. Um, one of the kind of tragic things about working in clay is that uh, you can put hours and hours and hours into a piece and one small mistake with a piece of greenware clay and that can shatter on the floor. Um, and hopefully you will have taken a couple of process shots, uh, but if you didn't take any process shots, uh, you will have to start that project over from scratch. It's a bit like um, accidentally deleting a paper that you spent a bunch of time on. You can't tell the teacher that you you wrote it without any proof at all. Uh, so not a bad idea to sort of have some uh, draft images, some sort of proofing or process images uh, ready to show me. I'm going to set that one aside and call it done because the walls are pretty thin and uh, all my fingerprints are removed. Uh, I just kind of ran the sponge along the rim here and uh, overnight I will dry it one more time in my bin uh, with the plastic over the top. I don't want it to dry out too fast. I'm going to allow the canvas board and the gypsum board uh, sort of pull the moisture out slowly underneath. Drying our pieces slowly over the course of a couple of days is always safer uh, than speed drying it by just letting it sit out. I'll catch up with you guys in the studio.